sure to subscribe to our channel. We publish new videos every day. Kauravani precharine nirvisesha shunyavadi paschatya deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, so for reassuring, is it sure that every translator except Bengali, I am going at the back side, Jara Bangali Rachen, একদম পেছনে চলে যান আমি যাচ্ছি যাদের এফএম নেই রেডিও শোনার মতো নেই কিন্তু বুঝতে পারেন না যারা বুঝতে পারেন তারা এখানে থাকুন আচ্ছা ইজ ইট রেডি চাইনিজ ট্রান্সলেটর প্লিজ রেজিয়র হ্যান্ড ওকে রাশিয়ান সো নো প্রবলেম ওকে সো মহারাজ সো আরেকবার সবাই As Maharaj has come, so His Holiness Bhakti Vikna Vinasa Nishinga Swami Maharaj Ki So today, very interesting topics, Gaur Gotha Okay, we are in the land of, island of Navadip And then Maharaj will start his lecture just now Hare Krishna, Swami Bolan Hare Bol Hare Bol Hare Bol Hare Krishna. So, coming into the land of Mayapur and being so close to all the devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we want to appreciate more some of the different pastimes which took place here. So, today and tomorrow, I want to talk about some of the events which are described to us in the, in the uh, Shastras describing Chaitanya Lila, such as Chaitanya Bhagwat and particularly Chaitanya Charitamrita because Chaitanya Charitamrita is Srila Prabhupada's own commentary and translation. So, I want to give particular importance to what Srila Prabhupada had given us. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, is famous throughout India more as a social reformer because with the advent of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he did bring about big reformations in the Hindu culture, in the Hindu society. And one of the principles of Lord Chaitanya's philosophy is that anyone who is properly qualified can take the position of a Brahmana and that it is not simply a matter of birthright. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was establishing, of course, this is the principle of the Vaishnava philosophy, that it is not the birth which is important, but it's the character and the qualities and the behavior which actually show a person, how, by which we can understand the person's particular ashram and varna. So, the Brahmana is respected in this society. Be they're, they're given the respect, it's meant to be on account of their qualities. But during the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, he was fighting against the ideas that simply the birthright is important. 
It's the birth which makes one a Brahmana. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, appeared in this holy land of Navadvip and he spent the first 24 years of his life here. I wanted to speak particularly about his youth. His youth meaning from the age of 16 going up to the point where he took sannyas at the age of 24. So, as a young man, initially, we know from the age of 11, he had opened his own school for teaching logic, nyaya. And he was a renowned scholar. I think last year when I spoke at this time, I spoke about how he had met with Keshava Kashmiri, the great Digvijay, who was touring all over Bharat Vars and who had come to Navadweep. And so at that time, Nimai Pandit, as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was known, was a teenager young man, 16, 18 years of age, and the Digvijay, great pundit had come, all of the other pundits had gone away. But Nimai Pandit had nothing to run away from, and he remained teaching. And when they met, he was able to enlighten the Digvijay and to show him the glories of the Supreme Lord because that Digvijay was a great devotee of Mother Saraswati and Mother Saraswati revealed to the Digvijay that Nimai Pandit was n none other than her worshipable Lord and Master, the Supreme Lord. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu defeated this great Pandit and of course with that defeat it gave him a very good reputation as a scholar. However, Nimai Pandit or as we say Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he didn't want to just simply be a scholar. He went on to be to reveal his divinity. And it came about after the death of his father, Jagan, Jagannath Mishra disappeared from the world. And with the disappearance of Jagannath Mishra, Lord Chaitanya arranged to go to Gaya. And his purpose in going to Gaya externally was to perform Shrad on behalf of his departed father. It is customary in the Hindu society that when the father or the, the sent member, somebody in the family leaves the world, we can go to Gaya and offer oblations to the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. Because in Gaya there is the footprint of Lord Vishnu. And by offering oblations to the Foot, the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu, then one is able to relieve the ancestors from past sins. So very beneficial for the ancestors that we perform this ceremony. Of course, th this was only the external reason. Lord Chaitanya's real purpose in going to Gaya was not just simply to worship the lotus feet of Vishnu. Because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord, He is above all of these rituals, which are for those on the material platform. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord Himself, and He is not obliged to perform any of these rituals. So, Srila uh, one time one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples, a devotee from Manipur, uh, at that time his name was Swarup Damodar, 
his father departed from the world in Manipur. And the son, Swarup Damodar Das, who was an initiated disciple of Srila Prabhupada, he, request, he told to Srila Prabhupada that my father has died. I have to go home and perform rituals on his behalf. However, Srila Prabhupada said to him, you don't have to bother with that. You have finished with all of that. Because now you have surrendered your life to Lord Krishna, you're no longer obliged to perform any of these rituals. These rituals are for those who are still in the bodily conception of life. One who is engaged in devotional service should have transcended the bodily concept of life. Devotional service begins on the transcendental platform as described in the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanchati Samasarvi Shubhuti Shu Madbhaktim Labhate Param. One who is transcendentally situated, who has understood that they are not the body, in other words, that they are Brahman, and who does not hanker or lament for anything, and who sees all living entities equally, then he can take up devotional service. So devotional service begins on this platform, and Srila Prabhupada instructed his disciple not to worry about performing these rituals, not required. Lord Chaitanya was telling Mother Sachi and the other people in Mayapur here that I will go to Gaya and perform Shraddha on behalf of my departed father. So it was a good excuse to go. Mother, everybody was pleased, yes, very good, you go. But Lord Chaitanya's actual purpose in going to Gaya was to meet with Ishwara Puri. Lord Chaitanya had already met with Ishwara Puri because Ishwara Puri had visited Mayapur and at that time Lord Chaitanya had brought Ishwara Puri to his home. And Mother Sachi had prepared food, everything. And Lord Chaitanya had developed a very nice relationship with Ishvara Puri. And he had decided that this person would be suitable to be my spiritual master. So Lord Chaitanya's purpose in going to Gaya was to be initiated by Ishvara Puri. Ishvara Puri was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. So he was coming in the line of disciplic succession from Madhvacharya. Brahma Madhva Godiya Vaishnav Sampradaya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the initiation from Ishwara Puri in Gaya into the chanting of the holy name of Krishna and chanting Krishna mantra. And in this way, he had awakened his ecstatic love for the Lord. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, but he is coming in the mood of Srimati Radharani. He wants to experience the love of Krishna. He wants to experience that love because he knows that the pleasure of loving Krishna is even greater than the pleasure of being Krishna. Being Krishna himself, one enjoys unlimited pleasure. But if one who loves Krishna, they enjoy even more than Krishna himself. So Krishna, Lord Krishna is the supreme enjoyer and he wants to enjoy more. Therefore he came as a devotee. He came as Nimai Pandit, 
and later on became Chaitanya, Krishna Chaitanya and Mahaprabhu. So Nimai Pandit became ecstatic in love for Krishna and his dealings in scholarship were forgotten. Previously, he'd been proud and arrogant and he would challenge the different people, especially the devotees. He would challenge them to debate and he would, when he would defeat them, he would laugh at them. And then he would defeat his own arguments and in this way he would go on and give so much headaches to the devotees. The devotees would even try to avoid meeting him because they saw him as being simply a proud, erudite scholar. However, after his initiation in Gaya, he became transformed. He was no longer arrogant. Instead, he became a very humble devotee of the Lord. And instead of arguing and defeating the Vaishnavas, he would bow at their feet, offering obeisances to them. And he would want to serve them. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching all of us by his example, the behavior of a devotee. To, be, to think of oneself lower than the straw in the street, to be more tolerant than the tree, to offer all respects to others and not to be eager for respect for oneself. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embodied this principle. Everyone he met, he would want to serve them. He would want to offer obeisances to them. So Lord Chaitanya was now beginning to relish the mood of love of Krishna. And particularly, he, he wanted to chant the holy name. Therefore, in the association of people like Srivas Thakur, they would gather every evening in the home of Srivas and have kirtan. The nocturnal kirtans in the home of Srivas Thakur would go on every night for, a more, for one year or more. The devotees would come there and meet. But when they would meet, the doors would be closed. It was not a public affair. Why not? Because even in the times of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were non-believers. There were those who were against the chanting of the holy name. People would say, why you have to chant so loud? I think all of you who are active in the ISKCON society have probably had the experience from your neighbors, all right? The neighbors, they often complain, why so much noise? Why can't you be quiet? So people thought better you should just do silent meditation. You should just sit quietly, why you have to chant so loud. So when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began his Sankirtan movement, initially it was a private affair. It was for the, the Lord along with his devotees, those people who were believers, who had faith in the holy name. We have experienced ourselves sometimes when we have kirtan and there are those people present who have no faith in the holy name, then the kirtan has a different atmosphere. But when everyone has faith in the holy name, 
then the kirtan becomes very ecstatic. So Lord Chaitanya wanted to experience that ecstasy. Therefore, he would have his kirtan, but he would have the kirtan behind closed doors. Of course, the non-believers, they didn't like this. They would get upset. Why we shouldn't get, we want to see what they're doing. Why we can't see. They would find so many things to criticize. It is not easy to please everyone in this world. To try to please everyone is not possible. Therefore, the thinking of a devotee is simply try to please Guru and Krishna. If we can satisfy Guru and Krishna, then our life is successful. Of course, if we satisfy Krishna, then Guru is satisfied. And if you satisfy Guru, Krishna is also satisfied. They're inseparable. So one of the chiefs of the non-believers was a person called Gopal Chapala. Gopal Chapal. He was from a Brahmana family. Brahmana family. We said smarter Brahman. Right? Not actually Brahminical by nature, but by caste, by birth, he's a Brahmin. So there are smarter Brahmins. And they give them, they have their own rituals, they have their own interpretations of the scriptures. So this Gopal Chapal, who was the chief of the non-believers, he was very harsh in talking. If we read the Bhagavad Gita, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes austerity of the speech. And he describes about austerity of speech consists in speaking words which are pleasing to others. So this Gopal Chapal, he was expert in speaking harsh words to others. Although he was a Brahmin, and Brahmins are meant to be the symbol of the mode of goodness, he did not exemplify the mode of goodness. Rather, he was just the opposite. He spoke words which were very harsh insulting others. And he liked to talk also. And of course his talking was mundane, all what we would call prajalpa, or the village talk. He would simply talk insulting, criticizing, complaining. So this was the mood of Gopal Chapa. And he saw how Srivas Pandit was allowing the devotees to come there to his home every night. Actually, it is said that just as Lord Krishna appeared in Mathura, but performed his pastimes in Vrindavan, in the same way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared at the Yoga Peeth, but his pastimes were mainly performed in the home of Srivas Thakur, at least up till he took sannyas. So Gopal Chapal saw the devotees going there to Srivas Thakur, and he knew that the Srivas Thakur was a Vaishnava. Now Gopal Chapal he was not a Vaishnava. He was a Sakta. He was, you know, worshipping people like 
Bhavani and the goddess Durga. We know it's very common among meat eaters and drunkards, womanizers, they will like to worship Bhavani. They do this Bhavani Puja. Bhavani means goddess Durga. We know Durga Puja is a very big event in Bengal. And generally, the people taking part in that kind of worship are addicted to such habits as meat eating and drinking. So Gopal Chapao wanted to bring some disgrace onto Srivas Pandit. Therefore, one night while they were all having kirtan, he came into the yard of Srivas Thakur and he put the paraphernalia for the worship of Bhavani. He put things like a plantain leaf and a red, a red colored flower, a special type of flower which is used in this worship. Then he put also some red sandalwood paste and turmeric and rice. And beside that also he put a pot of wine. Now Srivas Thakur of course was a very humble, gentle and pure Brahmin with no sinful activities. But this Gopal Chapao, he wanted to bring some disgrace onto him. Therefore, during the night, he placed all of these items into the yard there at his home. So the next morning, when the sun rose and Srivas Pandit saw all of these things, what did he do? Now, we would think we would want to hide it, but Srivas Pandit called everyone. He called all the gentlemen. Remember, Srivas is a Brahmana and he, near to him were the homes of other Brahmanas. Just like Gadarhar, he was the son of Madhava Pandit. His home was nearby. And then Advaita Acharya has his house beside Gadarhar Pandit's home. All of these people, Brahmanas, they're all living near to the home of Srivas Thakur. So he called all the Brahmanas, all the learned men. He said, gentlemen, please come and see all of this paraphernalia. This is what I use to worship Mother Bhavani. He said all of this laughing in a light-hearted mood. So the other gentlemen, the other respectable gentlemen there, they were, <laughs> they did not take this seriously. Rather, they simply called for a sweeper to come and clean the place. And after the, the, the sweeper had swept all the th things and thrown them far away, then they used the cow dung and water to purify the whole place. So Srila Prabhupada describes some important points in relation to the society there. First of all, he mentions that traditionally in a village or in a, a town, there will be a number of respectable men, meaning those with a Brahminical culture, Brahminically educated. And these people will be called whenever there is any problem in the society, whenever there is any confusion or dissension, some troubles, some agitation, then it's the responsibility of the Brahminical class of men to meet together and to decide what needs to be done to arrange for the proper continuation of the society. It's very important that there are this Brahminical kind of people. And this is one of the reasons why we have Gurukula here in Mayapur. 
that it is meant for training the young men that they will grow up to become qualified brahmanas. And with properly qualified brahmanas, then you can have peace in a society. Generally, in the society today, people are not peaceful. There's so much agitation and quarrel, disagreements. All of this can be removed when there is proper guidance from the leaders of the society. And the brahmanas are the actual heads of the society. Srivas Pandit was one of these kind of brahmins. But he was not always appreciated. Even Srivas Pandit, who was such a learned, humble, pure soul, even people tried to insult him. So this Gopal Chapal tried to do like this. So when he put all of this paraphernalia there, then they called for some cleaner to come. And Srila Prabhupada comments that it is the grace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that even the cleaners, even these people who are considered untouchable, that they can also be delivered by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As Lord Krishna says himself in the Bhagavad Gita, that even one may be of low birth, Triyo Vaishyas Tata Sudras Te Piyanti Paramgatim. Even one may be of lower birth, women, sudra, vaishyas, like that, but still they can achieve the supreme destination. So the Krishna consciousness movement is meant for this purpose, for giving everyone the chance to become, to be delivered from material life. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami, in offering his prayers, remember Sukadeva Goswami had been asked to describe the process of creation. And before beginning to describe the process of creation, Sukadeva Goswami first of all began to offer prayers. And one of the prayers mentions how all different sinful races can be delivered. Kirita, Hunandra, Palinda, Pukasha, Abira, Shumba, Yavana, Kashadaya, Yanyecha, Papa, Shudapashraya, Shrama, Sujanti, Tasmai, Prabhavishnave, Namaha. So Sukadeva Goswami is mentioning different races around the planet who are known to be generally sinful. And he said they can all be delivered by the mercy of the Lord. So this Gopal Chapal had done such a sinful thing. Nobody took it seriously. That Sri, nobody for a minute even considered that Srivas Pandit was guilty of this because he's a pure Vaishnava. Of course, sometimes even these people who worship Bhavani, they say, it's all one. They say, it doesn't matter who you worship, it's all the same, right? Bengali people have heard this kind of philosophy before, that it doesn't matter who you worship, it's all one, it's all Brahman. Srila Prabhupada points out there are different levels of Brahman. Somebody know, may, they may know the Brahman through meat eating and womanizing and drinking. The devotees of Krishna, they know the Brahman by chanting and dancing and taking prasadam. There are very there's a very big difference between the two understandings of what is Brahman. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Ye yatamam prapajyande tams tataiva pajamiyaham. As you surrender unto me, 
I reward you accordingly. So people who are addicted to these sinful things, they cannot expect to get the same results as the Vaishnavas who properly follow regulated principles. This Gopal Chapal tried to disgrace Srivas Pandit and the result was that he had to suffer. Within three days of him committing the offence, his body broke out in leprosy and he was being bitten by germs and insects all over his body. His body burned with pain. He was in a terrible condition. And because leprosy is a contagious disease, he had to leave the village. He had to go out and he had to go and he took up residence along the bank, along the banks of Mother Ganga. He, he had to go far away from everyone. Because naturally, if someone has such a deadly, painful, terrible disease, nobody wants to get it. So he went away and he was sitting there under a tree on the bank of the Ganga. However, one day he happened to see Nimai Pandit. Lord Chaitanya came past there. And when Gopal Chapau saw Nimai Pandit coming, then he approached him and he requested him that please see my condition. I am suffering terribly. You have come to deliver the fallen souls. You should deliver me. Yes, it's certainly true. Lord Chaitanya appeared to deliver the fallen souls. However, Gopal Chapo, when he was asking for deliverance, he simply wanted to be delivered from his disease. He didn't want deliverance from material ignorance. He just simply wanted to be free of his disease. So often people come to devotees and they will ask for blessings, right? They will say, oh, bless me, bless me. Just like Prabhupada was traveling on the train one time here in India. And generally people, they like to come, they hear this, you know, prominent guru is on the train, they want to come to get darshan, to get some blessing from him. So somehow two men were very persistent and they managed to get past Prabhupada's uh, guards and they got to meet Prabhupada and they asked him, please Swamiji, give us your blessings. So then Prabhupada looked at them and said, what are these blessings? What blessing is it you want? So the one man said, oh, I have my daughter to get married. And then the other man said, Oh, I have my back problem. If you can bless me to help my health, to cure my back. So Prabhupada looked at them and said, I will bless you to become like this brahmachari. There was one brahmachari there with the shaved head and the saffron cloth. So Prabhupada said, yeah, I bless you to become like him. Of course, the two men ran away. <laughs> they were not very eager to get that kind of blessing. One time I remember some years ago here in Mayapur, the discussion came up that how should a devotee bless someone? When we are asked to give blessings, 
what should be the blessing that we give? What is the Krishna conscious blessing? So the answer comes from Chaitanya Charitamrita, how Lord Chaitanya would bless people. That when asked for blessings, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would simply say, Krishna Matir Vastu, may your mind always be on Krishna. That is the highest of all blessings, that we can always remember Krishna and never forget him. So this Gopal Chapao, he was falling at Lord Chaitanya's feet and asking him that you please deliver me. You are the Supreme Lord. You have come to deliver the fallen souls. You, you should deliver me. So Lord Chaitanya was not interested in just simply giving him relief from his disease. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya became somewhat angry at him and said, you are, uh, you are an offender of pure devotees. You will have to suffer in hellish conditions for 10 million births for such offense. We should understand that the result of suffering in this material world is due to our ignorance. Whatever sufferings we go through in this life, it is all due to ignorance. This ignorance is the forgetfulness of Krishna and our eternal relationship as a servant of Krishna. Because of ignorance, we engage in sinful activities. And sinful activities bring us suffering. Just like this Gopal Chapal, he had to suffer Terribly, he had to suffer in the most terrible way. Leprosy is the most terrible of all diseases. His body was burning, it was being eaten by insects and germs, and there was no cure, there was no relief. But it was simply the result of his sinful activity because he had offended Srivas Thakur. So Srivas Thakur, of course, he does not take offense. He did not think, who is the person who did this to me? Who is trying to disgrace me? He accepted that some, this is here. This must be, there must be some plan behind this. Srivas Thakur didn't have any malice. He didn't have any grudge against anyone for putting the things there. So he didn't cause any suffering to go Pau Chapo, but Krishna does not tolerate the offense against his devotees. When we offend the devotees of Krishna, Krishna cannot tolerate. Srila Prabhupada gives the example that we may tolerate the heat of the sun on our head, but we cannot tolerate the heat of the sun on our feet. Just like sometimes we can experience, you go to Puri, where the, there's the hot sun and the hot sand also. And if you walk on the hot sand, then Certainly in the middle of the day, during the hot season, you will get blisters on your feet. But you can tolerate the heat of the sun on our head. So in the same way, the Lord, he can tolerate offenses against himself, but he cannot tolerate offenses against his devotees. And this way, Gopal Chapao had to suffer. 
Of course, later on, Lord Chaitanya had taken sannyas and he had gone to Puri and then there was a second meeting between Lord Chaitanya and Gopal Chapa. At that time, Lord Chaitanya was more merciful and he told Gopal Chapa that if you really want to get relief from your suffering, then you must go to Srivas Thakur and fall at his feet and beg forgiveness for your offense. You should genuinely repent your sinful behavior and you should promise that you will never again do such a sinful thing. So in this way, Gopal Chapal took the advice of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he went and he found Srivas Pandit and he fell at his feet and he genuinely begged forgiveness for his sins. So Lord Chaitanya can be like a rose, as soft as a rose and as hard as a thunderbolt. We see both these characteristics in the behavior of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just like one of Lord Chaitanya's devotees was Shivananda Sain. And Shivananda Sain was a family man. He was in the Grihastha Ashram. But he was a very intimate associate of Lord Chaitanya. So when Shiv Shivananda Sain's wife delivered a child, Lord Chaitanya was very happy and he named the child for him. However, when Chota Haridas broke, went against the regulative principles of the renounced order of life, then Chota Haridas rejected, was rejected from the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we see the rose and the thunderbolt. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not against people having family life and having children, of course, which is a part of family life. But he was against hypocrisy. He was against somebody in the renounced order of life, but at the same time still having the mood of enjoying the senses. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also taught us how to respect the Brahminical class of people. One of the pastimes which took place when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going to Gaya, I described earlier how he went to Gaya for his initiation and to at the same time perform the Shrat for his father. On his way to Gaya, Lord Chaitanya took a fever. He had a fever. And he told the, the devotees who were accompanying him, he said, the only thing which will give me relief from this fever is if you can bring the water which has washed the feet of a Brahmana. So the devotees had to go and find a genuine qualified Brahmana not just simply somebody who was a Brahman by birth, but somebody who was actually a Brahmana by proper standards and begged the water from his feet. And when Lord Chaitanya received that water, he drank it and was relieved from his fever. In this way, Lord Chaitanya was teaching all the devotees how to respect the brahmanas. One time while Lord Chaitanya was still here in Mayapur, they were visited by one astrologer. Uh, this, again, astrology. You know, it's a Brahminical art. Prabhupada writes that 
Brahmanas may do different things. One of them is they may study, they may take up the science of astrology. They may also learn Ayurvedic medicine. They may teach, they may study the scriptures and they may teach. And they can do puja. So these are the kind of things which Brahmins are expected to do. So on one occasion, this Brahmana man came to Lord Chaitanya's home. And it was understood that this Brahmana had the ability to tell everything, past, present and future. This is even common today. There are some people gifted, they try to do this. Prabhupada writes in the purport in this section, he said there's also Brigu Samhita. There are, there's a book called Brigu Samhita. And in that Brigu Samhita, that you can learn how to understand everything about the past and future of everyone. Everyone can learn about their past and future from this Brigu Samhita. I think there are only about three copies of this Brigu Samhita available, but there are copies available for those of you who really want to know. <laughs> However, Srila Prabhupada didn't give a lot of importance to these things. Sometimes when people would come to Prabhupada and offer their hand because they thought that Swamiji can also tell me what's written in my hand, Prabhupada would look at the hand and say, oh, very bad. Old age, disease and death. You better chant Hare Krishna quickly. And so, this Brahmana, however, who had come to the home of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was invited in and Lord Chaitanya inquired from him, kindly tell me, who was I in my past life? Tell me about my past life. Do your calculations and tell me about my past. So the Brahmana sat and began to do some calculation and he also did some meditation. So after doing some calculations and sitting and meditating, the Brahmana actually saw the effulgence of the Absolute Truth. And he saw within that dazzling effulgence, there were Vaikuntha planets, which all come from the energy of the Brahma Jyoti. And that Brahma Jyoti, of course, is the effulgence coming from the form of the Supreme Lord himself. So this Brahmana who had come there was not just simply an, an astrologer, but he was also an advanced devotee. So, when he saw this effulgence and he could understand that this was the absolute truth and it was quite a shock to the Brahmana because he had entered into a normal home, Nimai Pandits living here in Mayapur with his elderly mother, and with his wife. They were living simply in the Brahmin home. And the Brahmana never thought that this is a home of the Supreme Lord. But when he did his calculation and from his meditation, then he told Nimai, he said to Lord Chaitanya, he said, from my astrological calculation and by my meditation, I can understand 
that in your past life you were the supreme absolute truth, the cause of all causes, and you have the op all the opulences of the supreme Lord. And now in this life you are also that same supreme absolute truth. Lord Chaitanya stopped him and said, Oh my dear Brahmana, I think you've made a mistake. I can inform you, I know very well about my past life. In my past life, I was a cowherd boy. I was born in the family of cowherdsmen and I was brought up to protect the cows. And by protecting the cows, now I have taken birth in this Brahmana family. So Srila Prabhupada takes up this very important point that taking care of the cows is very, very important and very pious. Those people who are taking care of the cows are performing the most wonderful pious activities and they will be greatly benefited by such work. As Lord Chaitanya himself said, in my past life I was a cowherdsman. Therefore, by that pious activity, now I have taken birth in a family of Brahmanas. So, protecting the cows, we sometimes think, oh, this is low class. Who wants to be a cowherd man? This is not very good. People all think, I should be a computer programmer, I should be educated, I should get the good job. Of course, that is all sudra work, all hellish work. That doesn't create pious activities. If we want piety, it's available. Serve the cows. Very, in this way we become very dear to Krishna and you can get a good birth. However, so Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana like this, the, the Brahmana then looked at Lord Chaitanya and said, whoever you are and wherever you have come from, whatever you are, I simply offer my obeisances unto you. And in this way, Lord Chaitanya blessed that Brahmana with love of God. Because he had actually realized that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was none different from Lord Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. The combined form of Radha and Krishna is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the Brahmana, through his meditation, he could actually realize that Lord Chaitanya was not different from Krishna. And he had also understood that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is not different from Krishna, is the absolute truth. Prabhupada points out that incarnations of God are not just established by votes. It's not that you get a lot of followers and they elect you to be an incarnation of God. It has to be proven. And this Brahmana actually proved it by his astronomical calculations. He could actually understand that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was none other than the Supreme Lord himself. So, those of you who know the science of astrology, you can, you can draw up the chart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and you can see how this chart can only be of the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Absolute Truth. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was living here in Navadvip in Mayapur Dam and regularly different people were coming to his home. Sometimes 
a devotee of one day a follower of Lord Shiva came to his home, a devotee of Lord Shiva. And Lord Chaitanya happily got on the shoulders of this devotee and together they danced, glorifying Lord Shiva. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not different from Lord Shiva, but worshipping Lord Shiva is not the same as worshipping Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Lord and he is he has a relationship with Lord Shiva but not the same. Lord Shiva is like the yogurt and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not different from Vishnu is the milk. So milk can become yogurt but yogurt never becomes milk. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was encouraging all the devotees regularly to perform Sankirtan. He wanted people to chant the holy name. He had asked Nityananda and Haridas to go everywhere chanting the holy name, delivering Krishna consciousness. He wants everyone to please Lord Krishna. One day, uh, the devotee of Lord Chaitanya, uh, who lived nearby, who was a great devotee of Lord Rama, uh, what's his name? Marari Gupta, thank you. So Marari Gupta, was describing the glories of Lord Ramachandra. At that time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wrote on his head, Ramadas, the servant of Lord Ram. Of course, sometime, on one occasion, Lord Chaitanya had asked Marari Gupta to give up his worship of Lord Ram. But that night, Marari Gupta could not sleep. And then the next day, when Lord Chaitanya again met with Murari Gupta. Murari Gupta told Lord Chaitanya, I will have to give up my life because you have asked me to worship Radha and Krishna, but I cannot give up the worship of Lord Ram. So Lord Chaitanya then accepted Murari Gupta and told him that you are not different from Hanuman. You can continue your worship. And Lord Chaitanya also glorifies Murari Gupta that by your worship of Lord Ram, you are satisfying the Lord. Satisfying the Lord. And in this, at, this, at this time, Murari Gupta quoted a verse from the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Sudama Vipra. Because Sudama Vipra had come there to Dwarka and met Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna had embraced him. So Sudama Vipra said, Who am I? I am just simply not even a Brahman, I am simply a Dvija Bandhu, a, a Brahmana Bandhu, a friend of a Brahman. I'm a low class Brahman. And who are you? You are the Supreme Lord, the shelter of the Goddess of Fortune. But with your two hands you have embraced me. So Prabhupada talks about how Sudama Vipra was very humble. Actually he was a Brahmana but he calls himself Brahma Bandhu, just a friend of a Brahman, a low class Brahman, not really a real Brahmana. And Prabhupada said the members of Krishna consciousness movement are also not Brahma Bandhu. Most of us, we are not from Brahminical society. But he said, still we can satisfy Lord Krishna. And then Prabhupada quotes a verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yari deki tari kaho Krishna upadesh amar agaya guruhana tara edesh. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, simply tell them about Krishna. And in this way, you satisfy Lord Krishna. 
to satisfy Lord Krishna. That is the goal of our life. So Srila Prabhupada understands and is revealing to all of us that it's, we don't satisfy Krishna by just being satisfied with our birth. The real satisfaction of Lord Krishna comes in service to Krishna. And the best service we can do for Krishna is to tell people about Krishna. Therefore, wherever we go, whoever we meet, just simply tell them the glories of Krishna. A very simple formula, but very powerful. If we will take up this work, which Srila Prabhupada has given us, to distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere, then certainly the whole world can be changed. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was not satisfied to just see only Mayapur become Krishna conscious. Krishna consciousness is not something just to be cultivated in Mayapur, but everywhere the holy name has to be given. Those who are actually followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they take up that work and they go everywhere, traveling and preaching, telling people about Krishna. Of course, wherever we go, there will be challenges. Just like during the times of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, while he was having Sankirtan here, in Mayapur, there were obstacles. There were people objecting and trying to stop the kirtan. But Lord Chaitanya persisted. Srivas Thakur was often threatened. And sometimes the rumors came that the Kazi is coming with his men and they're arresting everyone. And of course, the Kasi did come because people like the smarter Brahmins went to the Kasi and complained. They told the Kasi that these followers of Nimai Pandit are making so much noise, they're disturbing everywhere, it's upsetting. Of course, the Kasi is a, he's a magistrate. His job is like the magistrate and his duty is to punish offenders who break the law and he has to keep law and order and make sure that the society is peaceful. So when he got complaints, he had to take action. And we often have experience ourselves, just like in our preaching, in some countries, in, for example, in China, one time when the police had come to one of our programs, one of our devotees said to the police, he said, why are you troubling us? The policeman replied, we're not troubling you, it's you who are troubling us. Because we got a complaint about you. So we have to come and do something. So, difficult situation. How to balance, how to live in this materialistic society and at the same time propagate Krishna consciousness. I was reading Vyasaki's Prabhu book about Radha Damodar Vilas. And he was describing there the situation in one American city where the devotees were performing regular Harinam and how regularly the devotees were being arrested. I have the experience myself also when I joined the Krishna consciousness movement Regularly we were going on the streets of London and regularly we would be arrested. <laughs> 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 I 
And being arrested, we would have to often go to the police station and then we would go to the, appear in the court and there, sometimes there would be fines. So the devotee wrote to Srila Prabhupada, coming back to the situation in USA, devotee wrote to Srila Prabhupada and asked him, what can we do about this? Srila Prabhupada said, he wrote back to them, he said, you should try to contact some respectable people in society, some people who have some influence over the police department. And you should appeal to them that you are God-conscious people, you live according to moral principles, you don't, do, you don't have any sinful activities as such, and you are simply propagating the word of God. And you should appeal to them. Jai Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj Ki. And I'm, I'm nearly finished. So Srila Prabhupada instructed to them that you try to meet some of these leaders in society and you get their support. You convince them that what you're doing is worthwhile and it is not of any harm to the society. And the, the devotees managed to actually do that they actually contacted some leaders in the society who had some influence and they met with the police department and they informed them that this Sankirtan is not harmful but it is very beneficial. It actually creates piety in people. And similarly also in London we had a, a little different experience because the people, we, often, we were often told that we're making so much noise. So then we got a lawyer to defend us and the lawyer pointed out in the court that there's much more noise on the roads than the noise made by the devotees. There's so many heavy, there's so many heavy vehicles producing a lot of noise. And the noise made by the devotees is not much, it's insignificant compared to the noise which is there every day on the street. And in this way, devotees gradually won the cases and established friendly dealings with the police department. And now today in London, every day they have Harinam without any difficulty. Yeah. So, we learn from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu like this, that the Sankirtan movement should go on despite all the obstacles. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Do you like our ad-free videos? Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We publish new videos every day, and don't forget to like and share our channel.